Did Terminaga just fool everyone? Why? Episode 7 Twist Ending has us crashing our heads and searching for clues. Is it all part of Toronaga's grand plan or are we all just pawns in his game? My description from your premiere in this video may contain some spoilers for episode 8. Welcome and let's begin. So we all have our theories and predictions following Shogun shocking episode 7 twist. One idea is that Toronaga's surrender is a calculated plan. Some points provide several clues suggesting that the warlord is playing a deeper game. Firstly, Toronaga renowned spy network would have likely alerted him that his brother's presence is on Osaka and the potential for betrayal. Secondly, the seemingly weakened state of his army at the border could be a deliberate tactic to bring his enemies into a false sense of security. Finally, Black Dorn outburst of anger and declaration of their impending doom could be a pre-planned act to further convince the council of their defeat. The series leave us guessing what Toronaga knowledge of his brother's betrayal. While there's no definite answer, the clues we discussed earlier suggest that Toronaga, being the master strategist that he is, may have anticipated or at least suspect his half-brother's plan. His decision to seemingly surrender and abandon Crimson Sky could be a calculated gamble. The situation with Turanaga have brother betrayal is unique to the miniseries. In the book, there's no such plot point as the brothers are openly opposed from the beginning, and there's no element of surprise or hidden knowledge involved. The specific storyline of a psyche betrayal and the mysterious surrounding Turanaga's awareness of it are created liberties taken by the miniseries creators. This deviation from the source material adds a layer of suspense and intrigue to the story, keeping us guessing why. Exploring deeper into the creator's intentions, Rachel, the co-creator of the series, provided some insight of Toronaga's internal struggle in the aftermath of the betrayal. As she explains in the official podcast, Toronaga is caught between two conflicting impulses, the instinct to survive and fight back, and the temptation to accept defeat and surrender to his fate. The unexpected death of his son really complicates his decision-making process and the loss of his heir is a devastating moment both personally and in the war, leaving Turanaga grappling with grief and questioning the purpose of his grand plan. Despite the obstacles, the co-creator hints that surrender may not be in Turanaga's nature. His character is defined by his resilience, his strategies, and his determination to achieve his goals. Throughout the series, we have seen and witnessed his ability to manipulate the situation to his advantage often using those around him as pawns in his political chess game. Even with his army compromised and his plans seemingly in question, it's unlikely that Turanaga will simply give up. He still possesses valuable assets, including Blackthorn and his knowledge of Western tactics, which could provide the key to turning the tide in his favor. Blackthorn's role in the upcoming episode is a subject of a lot of speculation among fans and viewers. Obviously, his expertise in naval warfare and his access to his ship equipped with cannons could provide Turanaga with the means to launch a surprise attack on Osaka. This possibility aligns with what Blackthorn said earlier of a naval assault, and it will be a fitting way for him to prove his loyalty and value to Toronaga. Blackthorn's outsider perspective and his minor knowledge of Japanese customs could allow him to see opportunities and many strategies that others might overlook, making him a valuable asset in Toronaga's quest for victory. One of Toronaga's greatest power lies in his network of spies and informants. Throughout the series, we have seen glimpses of this ability to gather intelligence and stay one step ahead of his enemies. This network is likely to play a crucial role in the upcoming episodes. As Turanaga is going to seek to regain the upper hand, the observation about this comes with the significance conversation with the Jin, the Madame of the Ajiro Tea House. This highlights the potential for a network of Gaishas to serve as Toronaga's eyes and ears within Osaka. Their access to high-ranking officials and their ability to gather information could provide invaluable insight in uncovering his enemies plans and identifying potential weakness. So what exactly is Tornaga's plan? Well, the series is going to keep us guessing. Here are some possible scenarios that could unfold. Scenario number one is the Trojan Towers. Tornaga's surrender is a ploy to infiltrate Osaka and launch a surprise attack from within. This will facilitate Tornaga's entry into the castle, allowing him to strike at the heart of the council, where they least expected. Scenario two, the naval assault. Blackthorn may play a pivotal role in the naval attack on Osaka. 
their cannons will breach the castle walls, creating an opening for Tornaga's remaining forces to storm the city and lower throw the council. Now, the official Shogun podcast offers further insights into the potential direction for episode 8 and the question of Tornaga true intention. The co-creator ratio of discussion with the writer Emily highlights the significance of Turunaga contemplative scene at the Tory Gate. The act of throwing stones and making a wish, inspired by the director's childhood anecdote, suggests a moment of vulnerability and desperation for the usually stoic warlord. This subtle detail hints that Turunaga may be facing a level of uncertainty and doubt that he has not experienced before, adding a new dimension to his character and raising the stakes for his upcoming decisions. The uh, podcast also explores into the the relationship between Turnaga and his son. The actor who plays Turnaga explains that despite this harsh treatment of his son, Turnaga deeply loved him and saw his potential as a future leader. His strictness stemmed from a desire to instill patience and discipline in his son, qualities essential for navigating the treacherous world, the world of feudal Japan. His dad is gonna not only be a personal loss, but also a strategic setback, leaving the future of his legacy uncertain. But the podcast also explores Jin's character and her conversation with Turunaga about the Willow World. The podcast exploration of Jin's character and her conversation with Turunaga about the Willow World provides further evidence for the theory of a hidden plan. Her vision for a formalized district in Edo aligns with Turunaga's own ambition for building a new and prosperous society. Her request for his protection suggests that she sees in him a powerful ally who can help her realize her dreams. This interaction hints at a potential collaboration between the two. But in statement, fate is like a sword, useful only for those who can wield it. And this speaks to Turnaga's ability to shape his own destiny. Despite the setbacks and betrayals he has faced, Turnaga remains a master strategist, capable of adapting to changing circumstances and turning the adversity to his advantage. This surrender, apparent surrender, may be just another move in his game. But you have to know that there's a lot in play. The Portuguese with their interest in Japan trade and their relationship with both Toranaga and, and the council are likely to play a significant role in the unfolding events. Toranaga's earlier deal with the black ship captain secure a safe passage out of Osaka and the promise of a church in Edo. However, the Portuguese remain aware of Toranaga's ambitions and his potential threat to their monopoly on trade. It is possible that Turunaga will attempt to leverage his relationship with Blackthorn to gain further concessions from the Portuguese. But let's see what happens with them. Yes, Shogun Episode 8 and 7 has ignited a firestorm of speculation and anticipation, leaving us too eager to see what Turunaga's will he surrender, whether Turunaga's surrender is real, a desperate gamble, or an acceptance of the feed remains to be seen. But what are your thoughts? Leave them in the comments below. My name is Christian from BM Premiere, and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye, one.